Microsoft Excel 2013, Creating an Excel Template. In this example, I will construct a mileage reimbursement form for our staff to use. The form requires the employee to enter in their daily commute miles, and then each day at the beginning and ending miles for each trip. The form then calculates the total miles traveled each day. It then calculates the number of days traveled to calculate the total number of reimbursable miles. The form has been created without calculations and not saved as a template. One of the concepts we covered in earlier sessions was range names. This is a refresher and I think it will be helpful especially as we move forward in later lessons. Named ranges can be used in formulas as well as allowing users to quickly move to a cell or range of cells within a workbook. The following guidelines must be followed while naming a cell or range of cells. The first character must be text or an underscore, names cannot contain spaces, and names can be up to 255 characters long. In this example, I will name two different cell locations to be used in creating a formula. The first cell I want to name is B5, and I'd like to name that Commute Miles. So you need to click in the cell or range of cells Go up to your Formulas tab, and under the Formulas tab, the Define Names group. Here you can define a name, or you can go to the Name Manager, where you can create a new name, edit or delete an existing name. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Define Name, and in this case, it found a label off to the left, Commute Miles. But notice that Commute Miles, there's no space in Commute Miles. They actually put an underscore in here that separates the two words. Notice down here it's referencing sheet 1, cells B5, and notice the currency symbols before the B and before the 5, making this an absolute value. Go ahead and hit OK. Now if you look up here in the name box, you'll see the commute miles. The second one I want to name is an A16. I want to name this one Days Traveled. So I'm going to come back up here to Define Name, and I'm going to type in Days Traveled. Now I have two different options here. One is to type days traveled in as one word, or I can use the underscore. Once I'm done, I go ahead and hit the OK button. If you'd like to test your name ranges, all you have to do is click on the drop down. You'll see the different name ranges here. And commute miles, if I click on it, should move me to cell B5. If I click on the drop down and choose days traveled, I should move to A16. Now it's time to add the formulas. So the first formula I want to build is in D9. And here we're going to look at our ending miles and subtract our beginning miles from there. So I just need to build a simple formula using the equal symbol, clicking on the ending miles and subtracting the beginning miles. Hit enter. And then all I need to do now is use the fill handle and copy the formula down. I always like to check the last answer just to make sure that the relative referencing has worked correctly. So I'm going to double click on the last formula that I just built. And notice that it's referencing C14 and it's going to be subtracting B14. Go ahead and hit the escape key to get out. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what the total is for those miles that we've traveled. So I'm going to click in D16 and I'm going to use the sum function. I can find that under the formulas under the sum or I can go back to the home tab and it's found right here under auto sum you'll notice the range of cells. Now I'm going to use my shift key and my up arrow just to deselect this last cell right here. Once I have the correct range, I'll hit the enter key. Now we're going to go ahead and build a formula that will find out the days that we traveled. We did name a cell days traveled here A16. So all we have to do here is have this equal A16. Now since I can see it, I certainly could click on it. But remember, we did name this days traveled. And if you can't remember where the cell is located or the name that you've given that cell, you can always come up under the Formulas tab and Use in Formula. And here is Days Traveled. Click on it and it will enter that in. Hit Enter. Now the Daily Commute Miles, which is cell B5, we named Commute Miles. Again, we can just go ahead and hit the equal symbol, come back up to Use in Formula, and click on Commute Miles. Hit Enter. So whatever's in cell B5 will also be here as well. Our monthly commute miles is going to be a combination of multiplying these two together. We'll start out with the equal symbol, click on one of these cells, multiply it by the other, and hit enter. 
the total reimbursable miles will be the total miles that we traveled during that time period minus the normal monthly commute miles that we traveled. So I'm going to go ahead and build a formula equals the total miles that we traveled during that period minus the miles that we would have traveled as we commute to work normally. And then the check amount will equal whatever the total reimbursable miles are times whatever the mileage rate is. In this case, we'll do 0 0.50 and hit enter. A couple of other things that I want to do with this is one is I would like to format this more like money. So I'm going to go under the home tab and instead of leaving it as general formatting, I'm going to change it to accounting. Also, what I would like to do here in the dates is I want to make sure that no matter how you enter in a date, it's going to be formatted a certain way. And I can do that by selecting this range, coming up here again to the formatting, and we'll choose short date. Now, I also need to build a formula here that's going to count the number of days that you traveled during this period. So that's the count function, and that can be found very easily as well. Under the Home tab, under the Auto Sum drop down, you'll see count numbers. Now, the count number needs a range of cells in between the parentheses to count. So we're going to have to manually click and drag and select the range that we wish this formula to count. Go ahead and hit Enter. In the next session, we will continue with formatting and saving the template.